Hello class. Today we're going to show you how to paint our class color wheel. This is the uh, worksheet that you'll find on the canvas right there. And we're going to develop the entire color range right here on this chart when we get done. It's going to look just like this right here. And we're going to start off with making sure we have all our colors that we're going to be working with. These are the primaries we had talked about. Cyan or a kind of a turquoise color. Magenta, a kind of a reddish pink color and yellow, a yellow color right there. So we're going to be using these three colors plus white to make and to develop all of the colors in this ring right here. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and start off with the middle ring because the middle ring are the hues. Hues are pure colors right there. And we've got our yellow right here ready to go ahead and we'll paint that in our first section right here which says yellow, in fact, in the middle ring. And we're going to use our painting skills that we learned out when we were working with those basic black shapes and that hard edge uh, worksheet right there. So we're going to be like shaping our brush, making sure our brush is over the area that we want to fill in, and seeing the tip of the brush right along the line. Notice how I'm rotating the paper just like we've done before, so we can nail that line and make a nice clean job of it right there. Here's the other side, and rotate it again, and there we go. And that was pretty fast, so we've got that one covered. The next one I'm going to put in there is the second primary color we're going to be using today, which will be the magenta. The magenta right here says it goes right here. I've given you uh, a little word right there to kind of remind us where we're going to place these so we don't make any mistakes along the way. And we're going to use the magenta the same way. I cleaned up the, well, cleaned up the brush, but I've got to get a little bit more wet water out of it. There we go. There we go. Now we're going to paint this magenta area in. Again, using the same technique we've done before, rotating the, the paper, hitting the line, rotating, rotating the paper, hitting the line, and rotating the paper, and hitting the line. The paint here seems to be a little thin. But it's okay because I can give it a second coat and make it a little bit heavier a little bit later. But right now I've got that filled in and it's going to work pretty good. We're going to go ahead now and work on the color that's directly between the yellow and the magenta. The color that's going to go in this box right here, which is going to be a secondary color. These are the primary colors that we talked about. Secondary colors are the colors mixed from any two primaries. So here the two, the two primaries, yellow and magenta, are going to mix this color right here. It says magenta plus yellow, which we're going to discover is a kind of an orange. I'm going to steal a little yellow right here and mix it in the center right here, and there's our orange. If it got a little too dark, I'd have to add a little bit more yellow to it. But I think that's pretty good. Well, maybe a little more. Okay. There we go. Let's go ahead and paint that one in right now. And that's going to be our orange. That's a little light. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to slip in a little bit more magenta. There we go. We want an orange that's pretty solid right there. And once again, the paint seems to be a little thin, but it sure covers fast. Next, I'm going to go ahead and mix these two blanks right here, the colors between the primary color, the yellow, and the secondary color, the orange, is going to be called a tertiary color. And it's going to have a little bit more yellow in it, the same orange we have, but a little bit more yellow. So I'm just going to go ahead and steal some of that color we had a few minutes ago and put it there with some of the orange right here we have. And now we can see we have a color which is not yellow, nor is it the orange, but it's something in between. It looks, again, a little light and thin, so I may end up giving it a second coat uh, a little bit later. Let me just get a little bit more there. So it looks a little bit more distinct from the yellow right there. There we go. So now we've got the yellow, kind of a yellow orange, an orange, and now we're going to come up with an orange magenta, which, surprisingly, should look like what we used to call a primary color yellow, uh, red. Red is really magenta with a touch of yellow. Ooh, 
Come on, magenta. There we go. Not too thin. Once again, this color is a little thin, almost like watercolor. I'm going to have to dry this out a bit here. Okay. Oh, yeah, if I pull it like that, it's really thin. Let's go ahead and try that again. Here we go. Okay, so we get done with this and we work our way around right here, continuing to put the next primary color in, which is only one left, and that's going to be our, our turquoise or cyan. And right here it says cyan, so we put that right over here. And that's coming on really nice. That cyan it doesn't have a lot of water in it, so it's painting really nice. Anyway, so you put the cyan in there, swing it around here, and then likewise, you'd add your secondary colors in and then your tertiary colors between magenta and cyan and you'd fill in this area right here. And then you'd fill in your secondary color between uh, cyan and yellow and you'd get that secondary color. Between cyan and yellow is an interesting color, it's green. And between cyan and magenta, We'll see something that looks like water. It's a kind of a violet or purple, oh, a little bit more violet or purple color. If we paint that in and get it all filled in, it'll be finished, and then we should be getting something. When we get all done, we'll get something that looks just like this right here. Okay. Now. Now that we've got this done, we're going to go ahead and we're going to paint in the outside ring. Uh, the middle ring, again, was this hues, or pure colors, saturated colors. Color and hue is the same word. But on the outside, these colors are going to be colors, but they're going to be mixed with a tint of white, which is going to lighten up the color, and it's going to actually make it what we call a tint. So tints are colors, same primary colors, plus white. So if I come back here to our yellow, and I've got some white sitting right here, I mix it in and paint it right there. That's going to be our white and the yellow, making our tint of yellow. If I want a little bit more white in there, makes it a little bit more tint. There we go. If I go ahead and fill that in, and then all I have to do is paint. Yeah, I hear you. My little kitty saying yes. This wants to be a painter too. Is that right? Yeah, right, Giovanni. There we go. So that's a tint of yellow. And the other thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take a really fast uh, washing out some of the water right here. Because every time we use this water, the color of the water mixes with the paint and actually can destroy some of the color we want. So now we got some fresh water right there. And back here at the white and these colors right here, I can literally add white to every color I made just a few minutes ago. So I have that light yellow-orange. I can paint that right in here. There's the tint of yellow-orange. See how I blend that right in. All the way around, once again, 
rotating the paper, making sure I can see the tip of the brush, nailing the line, and finishing it up right there. And I can go right around the entire area right there, taking every one of the colors we just mixed and making a full tint of it right there. Some of the interesting tints right there, with all the dark colors that we had before, like this cyan blue, is going to be a light blue like this. And you paint it all in, all the way around. And then the same thing here for our, our, our magenta. You can hit, hit that. Also, you, every time you rinse out your brush, you want to make sure it's totally rinsed. Otherwise, you're going to come up with a strange color right there. So, and we're probably going to recognize this cyan, the white, as a pink. So that's what that comes out to be. When we get all done, we'll end up having every color that we just mixed in our middle color wheel, every color is now going to be on the outside ring with a touch of white and it's going to look real pastel. And there we go. When we get all done, because I'm trying to go fast, We're going to have this. This is all the colors we just mixed with the white and these pure uh, colors right here. And we, now we have our full ring of tints. Our next step right here is to complete this inside ring. The inside ring are going to be shades. Shades are pure hues, colors right here on this ring right here mixed with a touch of black. We don't have the black at this point, but we're going to make some black right here by mixing all three primary colors. That's right, the three primary colors, when mixed together in the right amount, should give you something really, really, really dark. Really dark, like hopefully black. So there's some violet. Right now I mix, I mix the cyan and the magenta. Got a little violet right there, which is important because now I'm going to go ahead and add some yellow. And yellow, if you look at, opposite of yellow is violet right here. So what we're doing is we're actually mixing the color that's opposite the initial color on the opposite side of the color wheel, and that will be black. So it didn't make any difference whether we mixed green and we add uh, red to it, or we mixed uh, uh, blue and we add orange to it. Either one will work. Right now we've got green because I put too much yellow in there, yes. But like I said, if we add some magenta, that should darken it down. Sure enough, there it is. Darken it down. And that's pretty black right there. Now, you're probably wondering, why isn't it pure black? The pure black right there would only happen if these colors didn't have any, any impurities in it. Uh, when they make temper right there, they put a little bit of touch of a white material, which makes it so it's not translucent, so it's more opaque. Unfortunately, that little bit of white, when mixed with all three colors right there, comes out and shows up in a kind of a, a light, kind of a, a black, which is a little bit light. Anyway, if I paint it right here, you can see what I'm going to get. I'm going to fill it in really quick. There. It's a little thin. But it's a little bit thicker. And you're probably wondering, why are you mixing the black when you have some black already? Well, the reason for mixing it right there is just to prove the fact that these three colors, uh, when mixed together, subtract light. I'm going to subtract light totally, they become black. If I add a touch of black into it right there, I can literally move quicker to a darker color. And I'm still trying to keep up my basic mixture that I made so that it looks like it's an authentic mixture of the three primary colors. There we go. Once we get that done right there, we can go ahead and mix the black we have with each one of these hues right here in this middle ring. And we'll get the the answers to what's going to happen right here in the inside ring, which are all shades. Now, on our chart right here, there's this place right over here that says black. So if I put the black in this spot right here and plane it in, then later on I can take a, uh, a color and mix with this black and put it right there. Last time I used, uh, on this particular chart, I used some uh, magenta and I mixed it with white to get the pink, which is this color right over here. Now I'm going to take the magenta and I'm going to mix it right over here 
on my chart and I'm going to get uh, a kind of a really dark maroon color or something like this. Now I'm going to go fast. I'm not going to clean it up. I'm just going to put it down like that. Later on at the end I'll have it all clean. But I just wanted to let you know that's what we're going to end up with right here and we'll finish the rest of it up also later. I also added the colors over here while we were uh, when I brought this sheet over right here with the blue, the magenta, and the yellow. The cyan blue is our primary color. Magenta is right here in yellow. Now down here when you mix these colors together, cyan and magenta right there, blue, and the cyan should give you a little bit of a violet. That's not quite as violet enough as I'd like, so I may come back and dress that up. But the orange looks good. The orange is a mixture of, of yellow and, 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 cy and magenta. And then the green looks good because it's a yellow cyan, and that looks pretty good. So I may touch that one up right there. Anyway, back to mixing up our shades. Now I've got a dark color right here that I can come around, and I'm going to add this to each one of these primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. Primary, secondary, and tertiary. And I'm going to add this black to these colors here, and I'll get the answer to that inside ring, like I said, which is the shade. A little bit more of that there. There you go. Touch more of that there. There we go. I'm trying to keep this as black as possible there. Okay, so here's a touch of yellow. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually empty my brush so that when I put the yellow in there, the yellow will be more dominant compared to that darker color right there. So. Anyway, so this one here would be the yellow and the black. And it's a little transparent right now, but that's what you get. Something that's a heck of a lot darker. And it looks like it wants to be slightly green, like a khaki green. And that's what happens with yellow. Yellow and black looks like it's a warm green, though. It's a very warm, and it's a very dull color. It's not like these greens over here. But it just has a sense that it wants to be sort of green. Anyway, paint that in right there. Then, if I add the same... Uh, black to my, like I said before, with the magenta right there. But the yellow is in it. Look at that. See? Actually, this color, because it's more red, would probably go best right here. I'm going to put it right here. I don't know if you caught that, but when I mixed it, I didn't clean the yellow out totally out of my brush. So it was red. So the red goes right there. I'll clean it out, and I'll put the magenta in the next spot over. I'm going to pull it right here, get some of the extra water off and clean it up a little bit later anyway. So that's that. Now, now the brush is cleaner. No yellow on it. Because I just want the magenta and the black. There's the magenta. Too much water. There we go. And I'll steal some of the black right there. And that would be the answer right here to magenta and whoa, too much, too much water. So that's something that you're going to watch out right there for because I got so much water on the brush. I definitely want to get it deeper and not so thin. There we go. That's much better. That's better, better, but not really better. nice and dark. Okay, see? Clean it up, turn the page, clean it up, turn the page, smooth the color out, always smoothing it, that makes it look a lot nicer. So you want it nice and even. Because this is a chart, it's not a painting right now, we just want to make it as flat as possible. We don't want to show any texture in this, this is not a Monet. Pulling it clean. Taking off, smoothing it around here, and that gets that. If I continue all the way around here, I would get all of the shades in the entire section. I'm just going to hit this one. There's that. Notice that that looks a little bit of brown, and that's what happens when you mix a little bit of orange with black. It turns brown, and it's a it's a darker, deeper brown. If I would mix the middle orange right here with the same black which is practically still on my brush. I would get something more like this. A little bit more orange, a little warmer color. Like this.
I like this because when I get done, I don't have to finish it totally. I have one over here that I finished, which will show you when this all dries how you can get, make it smoother. Now I'm just taking water off of it. <laughs> Let me put that back on. There we go. Got okay, that one. Got this one. I'm smoothing it out a bit. It's been drying. Okay, it's been smooth. This looks a lot drier. So we've got practically this whole ring going right there. And I'm not going to do all of the ring. I am going to add some magenta. I mean, some the, the magenta, yellow, and uh, cyan to some cyan. So I'm going to get a shade of this. And that darker shade is going to go right here. If I were diligent and spent another 15 minutes, I could get that all done. But instead of doing that, I'm going to take this one right here, which is all done. It's actually the actual finished painting right there. And, and, and also filling in the mystery spots. For example, we had over here the three primary colors. We have the three secondary colors. Over here I put white where it says white. And down here where it says do a tint, I added the sign. I picked, I picked magenta. I added magenta to the white and got this pinky color. And then I took black because it says black. Black makes the shade and it's just some black with some of that uh, 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 cyan color right there. In this case, I, no, that was, that was supposed to be magenta. It looks like it's almost violet. Anyway, I mixed the black with it, which got it really dark. It's really dark. It would be the one right about over here, so it's probably a violet right there. And then, over here for a chroma, a chroma is an interesting mixture right there, because in a chroma, you're going to take a color and its opposite. The opposite is a complementary. We, we learned that at the top right there. The opposite of two colors in the color wheel, this one and this one over here are complementary, this and this is complementary, the, the cyan blue and the orange is complementary, the green and magenta is complementary, yellow and violet are complementary. And then also all the in-between colors are complementary. But if I mix these two colors, they're going to make black. So in effect, this color and this color moved across here, it becomes a shade. So chromas are very similar to shades in that they're going to move in the same direction across the, across, instead of going, this way, this in black, I'm going to go this way from this color to that color. And because that color has all the opposites that this color doesn't have, it makes the black. Anyway, when you get done right there, you're going to have this paper, which is also on your assignment sheet. And it gives you the images right there for a chroma, and then it gives you an image for a tone. A tone is a gray plus any color. Not black and not white, but a gray, which reduces its saturation, which makes it less intense. And we're going to talk more about intensity later on. We have a, we have a project just for that. And then we have earth tones. Earth tones are any time you add a brown to some color. So if I have this color right here, and brown is this color right over here, if I mix this color with that brown right there, I can end up with an earth tone right here. And it could look like a lighter earth tone, in fact, or a darker earth tone. This one here is getting kind of dark. There it is. And earth tones are really cool, cool because they're they're kind of a sepia color, and, they, and a lot of times you see old-fashioned pictures, and they have a kind of a uh, a sepia color to them. They're not black and white, but they're kind of a, a soft brownish and white kind of thing. Anyway, that's a little bit messy. I'll clean it up later. And then finally, you have warm and cool colors. Warm colors and cool colors, right here in this cleaner one. Warm colors are colors that have yellow and orange in it, have a predominant contra, uh, content of yellow and orange in it. And cool colors are colors that have a content of blue in it, and it gives you a sense of feeling cool. So all of these colors on this side are cool, and all these colors, are on, colors on this side are warm because they have the yellow in it, and this has the blue in it right there. Anyway, that completes our color lesson for today, and, the, uh, and then we're going to follow up with some color blends in our next activity.